Does your truck kill batteries? Mine does. Watch. What does this rock and this Chevrolet truck have in common? More than you would think. They don't do much of anything but sit around. For the second time in less than two months, this built like a rock truck has decided to imitate a rock and leave me stranded. Right now I'm waiting on a technician to show up. I've spent a very frustrating day dealing with Chevrolet roadside assistance. Uh, it's not fun. The tech showed up today, about 20 minutes late. But I understand, we're out in the country, sometimes it's hard to find. He's a nice enough guy. He uh, got out a stool bag and performed the uh, service bulletin that he had with him. I read that service bulletin and frankly, there wasn't a single symptom on there that I was experiencing. But he went and looked at it all and it was fine. He got out his tester and he found out that both batteries had only three volts, another set of dead batteries. That makes four batteries murdered by my truck in the last 8,000 miles. Something is short-circuiting my batteries. It's running fine, it's no warnings, it's no voltage, the alternator looks great, and I go to push the little button, nothing. The dash won't even light up. There is no electricity in that system whatsoever, and the last time, it was just two to three hours after I had last run the truck. Luckily, it was at my home, so it didn't leave me stranded on the side of the road. Well, the service technician wasn't able to do anything. I had told the person that was sending the service tech that the last time that truck had to be boosted to even unlock the steering wheel for towing. And I said the last time it took two other vehicles to get it started, one for each battery. One battery alone won't start that truck. Well, he said, I understand, and they know what they're doing in service, and uh, they have this wonderful machine they'll bring with them, and it'll start that truck. I said, okay, so if your tech doesn't fix it with the service bulletin, and you get it boosted somehow, uh, how, what are you going to do then? He said, well, we'll drive the truck back if it's okay with you. And I said, sure, we'll drive it back and uh, diagnose it and see what's going on. Well, the last I heard... You actually need two people to be able to drive something back. One service technician isn't enough. And sending one booster pack with that service technician that, to a vehicle that requires two booster packs, you're not listening. You know, sometimes I just want to grab somebody gently by the head and look into their eyes and say, Are you in there? Can you hear me? Well, these people... They can't. Starting with GM roadside assistance, who I was told by my dealer that I had to call, they couldn't do it for me. I called them. They wanted my VIN number. They wanted the odometer reading. They wanted me to get a text and then try to enter it through an app. Well, first off, if you're truck's dead you can't see how many miles are on it and second off I want to talk to a person you hear that Chevrolet you need to let us talk to people well I couldn't make it work in the time allotted that they gave me so I had to hang up and go back and go out to the truck, find the VIN number, couldn't get the odometer. And I sat there trying to make it enter and go past it without it, which was impossible. So finally, the next time I called back, a person answered. So obviously they were tracking my phone and, and knew that I was having problems. The lady was nice enough, but she couldn't help me either. She said, I understand, we will get a wrecker out there to you and it will be $63 to take it to your dealer. $63? Well, we can take it to the closest dealer free of charge, but the next dealer is going to be $63 extra. I said, well, I don't have a dealer that's qualified in our area. The one you want to take it to works on 
Jeeps and Chrysler and Chevrolet and Tonka trucks. I said the last time I went there, they kept my truck for four days. And then when I called to ask about it, said, well, I'm sorry, we don't even know why it's here. We don't have a decent mechanic. So I don't go there anymore, Chevrolet. They shouldn't even have your uh, credentials on the wall to work on your products. I go to a better dealership in College Station, who so far hasn't helped me a bit today. Just give me a lot of aggravation and run around. It's now six o'clock. I've been waiting on the general manager to call me back and tell me when they're going to tow my truck in. It's not going to happen today, so that means I'm going to lose another day of work. That'll be three so far. Are you listening? Are you in there? People don't need this aggravation and have to go to work. You've made our society dependent on your cars. We have to have them. We need you to take care of us. And you're not doing it. Oh. Well, I don't know what else I can do to get through to you guys. Chevrolet, your roadside assistance was pitiful. It's not a matter of me paying you the extra money to take my truck for service. I have the money. If it had been my fault or something strange and unusual, I would have paid it. But it's the dealer I bought the truck from 20 minutes down the road from this place that I feel is totally unqualified to even have Chevrolet on the side of the building. That's the problem. You need to take care of the customer. I'm standing here making a YouTube video instead of doing the work I should have done. And tomorrow I'm not going to get any work done either because I don't have a vehicle that will tow my little work trailer. Now, I've been a lifelong Chevrolet driver, a <laughs> Chevy guy, I guess, or was. My first truck was a 1967 Chevy with a six-cylinder in it. Barely do 70 miles an hour. That was a long time ago. And I keep buying Chevrolets. This truck is the fifth Duramax I've had since 2000. I've had Dooleys, I've had single cabs, double cabs, gas engines, 454s, you name it. I've driven one Chevrolet. You need to get your act together and quit screwing your customers over $63. I'll let you guys know how it goes from here on out. I don't know why my batteries are dying. I don't know what that truck's doing to kill them. It's a great truck. I love that truck. It's got a lot of electrical quirks. Heck, sometimes you'd be sitting there and the radio comes on by itself. Uh, anybody knows what could kill batteries, I'm sure Chevrolet could use your help. I'll let you know what goes on. Thanks for watching.